Bring my mask every morning. So thank you so much. Uh, 745. Uh, let's go to the phones. We have, uh, well, she's an outgoing uh, senator now. Senator Regina Bisco lee who announced uh, yesterday that she's not uh, seeking re-election. So, uh, of course, uh, we wanted to get her on and, uh, you know, kind of expand on this a little. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Brian Sabrina. Good morning, Guam. Good morning. Uh, All let, right. Let's just start uh, yeah. right with with it. So again, not seeking re-election. Can you kind of go into the the reason that you uh, made this decision? Decision. Sure. Um, it was a it was a really difficult decision to make, and you know we all understand that public service it really requires a lot. It requires a lot from our policymakers, but also from our families, and so. I think the reality of my situation is that I am the wife of a, a full-time firefighter. I am the mother of two girls, and that really is, um, you know, my primary responsibility. But I've, I've been able over the past four years to, to attempt to strike a balance between, you know, my duties in my office, but also the needs of my family. And so I just really feel like, uh, you know, a wise woman once said to me that, in terms of parenting, the days are long, but the years are so fast. And I think you can both um, understand where I'm coming from. You know, I, I blinked and my oldest daughter is 12 already. And so I just feel like these are really critical and, and really formative years for my girls. And I want to be, be focused on that and, and really helping them to, to achieve whatever it is that they want to do. But, but I also feel like my decision is really uh, based out of, my deep respect for the people of Guam. Um, I have a, now a very, very intimate understanding of, of what it takes to do this job and to do it really well. And so I just know that, um, you know, I have a lot of hope for hopefully the people that are coming in. I want to encourage the voters of Guam to really vote wisely and to select wisely because, you know, you might not think that, the, that this is important, but these 15 people you know, make decisions about our future and about the future for our kids. And so what could be more important than that? I really don't, I really don't know. Senator, you, but, you talk about uh, knowing what it takes to be able to do the, do your job and to do it well. Do you, do you feel like you uh, did a, a well job as a senator serving the people of Guam for what is it? Absolutely. I'm, I'm really proud of what I've been able to accomplish. I mean, I kind of, you know, been thinking about all of the things that uh, both me and my team have been able to do and, just in the past few years, my very first bill was taking senatorial pay raises and putting that money into our schools. Um, you know, we did tax relief for small business. Uh, we updated workers' compensation for the first time in 30 years. Uh, we focused on workforce development and, and higher paying jobs for our people by expanding apprenticeships and protecting our environment and finding new resources for the first time in many, many years for child protective services, um, expanding bereavement leave. I mean, there's so many things that we were able to accomplish. And, and even in the last few months, uh, it might not have gotten a lot of attention, but I really spearheaded efforts to get legislative operations online. So we had to navigate a lot of legal and technical challenges to be able to have these virtual hearings to allow um, continued public access to our legislative process and ensuring that there was transparency there and that the public could interact with us. I think all of those things are extremely important. And so, yeah, I think I've done an excellent job in all of those things. Well, how would you respond? To this? There's been a, lo a few comments here. Uh, we just got one on our Facebook. Uh, Senator Lee saw the writing on the wall. Uh, she did zero to help the people of Guam as DOL committee oversight. What did she do to help the pandemic unemployment process? So there were a few comments where people were kind of saying like, oh, she wasn't going to win anyway. How do you respond to those? Well, I came in in the very first election. I, in my mind, I was like, okay, well, this is kind of a 50-50 crapshoot here. I'm not sure if I'm going to get elected. And I came in, I think, eighth or ninth in that first election. In the second election, I actually did better than I did the first time. And so in terms of the labor oversight, we have had more oversight um, hearings than I think any other, any other uh, agency 
over the pan- the course of the pandemic, we're actually coming up on our third oversight hearing. I think July 1st is when we have that scheduled. So we've been on top of labor. This is mm-hmm. something that it's just a huge challenge. It's a huge undertaking to try to get something like PUA stood up in a matter of, you know, 12 to 15 weeks. And this is something that has been on the books for dozens of years in the mm-hmm. states, and they're still having challenges and many states still have not had PUA um, and unemployment benefits paid out. So this is not something that's unique to Guam. And, you know, I welcome those kinds of criticisms uh, about the oversight. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have had oversight. We have had opportunities for the public and for other legislators to be very critical of DOL. And, you know, we have had opportunities for people to call our office. Many people who have called our office, uh, we've been able to connect them to uh, resources to make sure that DOL calls them back. And we get those phone calls all the time. My number is 472-3455. And we've helped many constituents be able to connect to, to DOL and to get an update on their unemployment benefits. So. Um, Senator, was there a, because I I know that you said the decision was driven by uh, your desire to to spend more time with your family. Was there a point maybe in session or uh, in carrying out your duties as a senator where you just kind of thought, I'd rather be with my kids and my family? Was was there anything, was there, what did it have anything to do with, because it's been kind of contentious a lot on the session floor. So what was that point? It, it has been contentious, but it's been contentious from the very moment I stepped foot in that place. Um, I really feel like every, even in my past jobs, I always kind of evaluated, you know, this is, my time is very precious to me. It's the most precious resource that I have. And so any moment that I'm away from my children, I better be spending doing something that's important, that's going to have impact, not just for them, but for our entire community. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean... Again, I, I will say that anybody who knows me, it, my core value is respect. And I have a lot of self-respect, but I also have a lot of respect for the people that I work with, with that I work around, and that I work for. And so, again, I think that just, you know, taking stock of the people that I'm that I'm around and, and just trying to be in an environment where I think I can thrive and do my best work, um, it's important for all of us at every stage in our life to kind of just take a beat, take a breather, and and just think, am I doing the best that I can with the the short time that I have? Mm -hmm. And so that's really where my decision is rooted Mm -hmm. in. So you you plan on stepping away uh, from politics, not seeking re-election, but are you uh, really stepping away from politics? So would we or should we or anticipate that you may... um, still be involved in in some way she's trying to, um, she's trying to ask well, if you're going to get a job with the administration I think. well i absolutely oh. will you know always be doing something to help our community thrive i think now that i have kind of cut this umbilical cord i'm, I'm able to hear and see some of the opportunities that are available to me um both in the private sector maybe with the federal government or in the local government i mean it's just kind of like uh really in, in my perspective, it's, it's been a little bit of a relief and, and always kind of wondering, especially now, it's really risky to kind of be out of a job. But in, in the way that I look at it, I really feel like it's an opportunity for me to, to see what would be the next best step. Man, you, girl, go, you gush. say you're leave, it sounds you, like you uh, you're stressed was... out over there. <laughs> I'm sorry? You said a, a, a little bit of a relief, right, that you're, you made this decision. It sounds like you were really stressed out. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is not a job to take lightly or to laugh or joke about. I mean, this is a very serious job. And so many of those times, even when you walk out of the door, you, you're going to, you know, go grocery shopping for your family and, you know, get you get bombarded by people who have issues with streetlights or road repairs. You know, they're they're having issues with trying to find a job or meaningful employment like these are all things and you know people in our community they know who I am they come up to me and they they share their stories and that's my job and it never really goes away Mm -hmm. and so for you know four years of my life it's been a 24-7 endeavor 
Right. And so, yeah, it, and I and I think the reason it, it it has been is because I take my job so seriously. Uh, I know you yeah. you mentioned federal government there, so I'm just kind of. You, can you tell us anything about any offers you might have already uh, entertained or? Yeah, well, you know, as as you know, I spent um, a lot of years of my life um, living and working in the Washington D.C. area, and I was recently elected um, to be a delegate to the Biden. Um, a delegate for Joe Biden for president, and so we're we're planning on you know making our way over to the convention and particip- participating in the convention. There's a lot of uh, federal jobs that could potentially open up with the transition, and I'm really looking forward to knocking President Trump out of office and electing a new president, President Joe Biden. Um, so you know, there's a lot of of opportunities there as well, not just for me, but for the people of Guam to really uh, have a more equitable and and a federal government that listens to us. Right. Well, well, Senator, we just wanted to get you on and kind of break bread and, and go into this. Uh, obviously, uh, you're finishing out your term. You going out with a bang or a whimper? Mm-hmm. Oh, a bang. We have so much work ahead of us. I mean, there's just a lot of while I still have this time in office, you know, there are a lot of things that I want to pursue. I'm really trying to focus on what's it, what's within our control. And yesterday we had a public hearing for a bill that I introduced, um, just really trying to capitalize on the hundreds of millions of dollars that are coming into Guam through military construction. And so really trying to make sure that we have the people in place to keep those permits going and making sure that our resources are protected and we get that money flowing into our economy, especially at this very critical time. Um, I also have a couple of climate change bills that I'm going to be rolling out. That's super exciting for me. Um, And, you know, I'm always just trying to do the best with what I have. and, And I really want to thank you for this opportunity, but also thank my family and my friends my incredible team at the legislature for all of their work um, and just really encourage the people of Guam to vote wisely. You know, I think press releases are really nice, but you have to look at the effectiveness of our leaders, which leaders are using these precious government resources wisely. And that's a charge for all of us. Make sure that you're registered to vote and make sure that you are informed about your vote. Well, there you go. Thank, thank you so much, Senator, and we'll thank catch you. up again, you know, as, as uh, you get closer to the end. And then, obviously, I mean, you, it, if you're in the news for uh, your efforts. Thank you so much. Right. Take, okay, take Senator, care. Wash your hands. Will do. Okay. Well, <laughs> well there you go, 758, uh, Guam's favorite. <clears throat> you know, talk about labor oversight. Uh, we want to bring a 